Happy Friday, wine lovers! It's Stephanie Miscue, certified sommelier and author of the blog, The Glamorous Gourmet. And welcome to my weekly Facebook Live show, Wines of the Week. I'm here with you every Friday at 5 p.m. to share some fabulous wines with you you won't want to miss and kick off happy hour and just, just have fun, right? <laughs> and I missed you all last week. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and enjoyed lots of delicious food and wine with their family and friends. And I'm going to make it up to you today because on this fabulous Friday, December 1st, when did that happen? I guess today. Um, today we're going to be talking about wonderful red wines for winter. And um, I'm coming to you from our little wine room at home. I thought, what better place? It's a little chilly in here. So I'm bundled up to really get in the spirit because it's still 80 degrees, 85 degrees here in South Florida. But anyway, these wines are basically the wine equivalent to your favorite cashmere sweater or your favorite cozy blanket, and they are going to pair beautifully with all of your favorite winter dishes. So think, you know, like cassoulet and coco vin and bouffe bourguignon and all that good stuff, or lobster mac and cheese, whichever floats your boat. Um, but I actually have a great recipe for a quick coco vin on my website. I'm gonna link up with the show notes, but these wines are just gonna, I think you're gonna really enjoy them. And I also timed this episode to pair uh, nicely with my latest podcast episode, which is Red Wine 101. So if over the weekend you wanna learn about red wine or you know while you're sipping a fabulous red wine, I mean, I'm here to help. So I hope you might have fun, you'll have fun doing that. And I will link up the podcast episode in the show notes as well. It's also posted on my Facebook page at various places. So um, if you wanna pop over and listen to that at some point, I would greatly appreciate it. So um, thanks so much for joining me today. We've got a lot to sip through and if um, I so appreciate you being here. If you wanna take a minute and go ahead in the comments section and let me know where you're watching from or if you don't feel like sharing, you can just throw up some emojis just so I know you can hear me. I would really appreciate it. And I love to have you do that while I share with you our super simple format. It's the same format every week. Uh, I taste through four wines. Oh, thumbs back, right back at ya. Every week I taste through four wines and while I'm going through the tasting, you can uh, comment or ask questions. And that's the beauty of Facebook Live, folks. I can answer you in real time and it's so much fun. So please go ahead and do that. Um, I like to keep these to about, you know, 30, 40 minutes. I know it's Friday. I know you've got places to go and people to see, so I won't keep you. I just wanna get you in the mood for the weekend and get you psyched to enjoy some great wine. Um, also, if you happen to be watching this video after the live broadcast, which happens, please go ahead and ask questions and leave comments as if you were watching it live, because I monitor these for weeks after, and I promise, pinky swear, I'll get back to you at some point and respond to your comment or answer your question. I'd be happy to do that, so no worries, okay? So, all right, so again, if you're just joining us, I'm Stephanie Miskew, and today we're going to be enjoying uh, fabulous red wines that are perfect for winter, winter reds. That's what we're all about today. Let me just pull this up real quick. And we can go ahead and dive into our tasting. Let's see. Here we go. All right. So today, as normal, I have two steels and two splurges. So I always start with the steels. And by steals, I mean these wines are priced in the everyday range, you know, so they're mostly under $20. And then the splurges can vary. It depends. But they're all still great values, in my opinion, or I wouldn't be featuring them here. So our first wine is the Lees, and let me flip the screen, da, 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 right here, come on. Okay, so you can read the label. It's the Lees and Fitch Firehouse Red from California. It's the 2015 vintage, $12 a bottle, folks. And you can see the cute little label. I actually got this sample I got this sample and I made chili last night and we just decided to crack it open. I'm like, you know what? For 12 bucks, that is a nice little bottle of wine. And I was gonna say I could pop the cork, but it's got a screw cap, which I love. Screw caps are great for your everyday wine, folks. They're 
phenomenal. Your wine is never going to be ruined. It's going to be in good shape when you drink it. So we like and embrace the screw cap. So, and, and this wine um, pulls from vineyards in a lot of different AVAs in California. You've got grapes from Lodi, Clarksburg, Contra Costa County, and Sonoma County. And when I say AVA, that's just a fancy way of saying where it's from. So it actually stands for American Viticultural Area. So, and again, it's just a geographic designation that just helps you know where the grapes come from and where the wine comes from. And the wine is actually produced, it's a neat story, by Three Badge Beverage Corporation. And it's named after old fire firefighter badges from the Sebastiani family. I thought that was really cool. I don't know if you have that connection in your family, but if you do, you might be really even extra interested in this wine. But the company is led by fourth generation vintner August Sebastiani, and it's run out of an old fire station in Sonoma. And it's the same fire station his grandfather helped build and where his father volunteered. So you gotta, you gotta love that connection. That's awesome. Oh, someone's having technical difficulties. Hold on, let me pull up the video so I can see if you guys are asking me any questions. All right. Well, I hope you can hang in there, Tom. Pop back in. We, you know, we love it when you're a part of our group. It's always more fun. So again, this wine, just a delightful little blend. And this, what I love about this wine too, is that it's a blend of different grape varieties all of which you should be looking into this winter. All of these are great winter grapes and they're all blended together in this wine, which is a blend of 38, and in fact, why don't I pour myself a glass while I'm reading this to you. It's a blend of 38% Petite Sorrel, 16% Merlot, 5% more Vedra, and 3% Tempranillo. Now I will uh, list them all in the show notes so you don't have to worry about writing them all down. That's a lot of grapes but they really come together and create something very nice in, in your glass. And again, for $12 a bottle, I mean, come on. Um, and let's go ahead and do our tasting. For those of you joining us for the first time, I do a guided tasting of each wine and I like to follow the six S's and I'll just run through them in our first wine for you, okay? And then you can follow along. I hope you have something in your glass. That would be awesome. So the first S is C. And there's so much you can tell about a wine just by looking at it. In fact, this wine, and I'm gonna hold it up right here for you. You can see it's a beautiful, deep reddish purple color, just like we would expect a young red wine to be that's made of these grapes. You'd expect it to be pretty dense in color, but what it also has going on, it's dark in the core, but then around the edges, it does lighten up a little bit. So it's not as dark as some wines are that we might be trying later are. Um, but any event, so it's a beautiful color. It looks like it should. There's no browning around the edges, nothing floating in it, nothing that would say we don't want to move forward with our next S. Actually, I'm gonna pair the two because their next S's are swirl and sniff. So we swirl the wine to really infuse it with oxygen and it essentially just turns up the I'm just going to proceed. Uh, it just turns up the volume on the aromas to give you a really good sense of what the wine is about. So you swirl and then you roll that. It primes the wine for the next S, which is sniff. And for that, you just simply put your nose in the glass and take a nice, a couple deep breaths. Oh, that is nice. Man, and on the nose, I'm getting beautiful, lots of red fruit, some leather, definitely some tobacco going on. It's really nice because it has nice fruit, but it also has um, a nice leathery, uh, tobacco-y thing going on as well. So it's not purely just really ripe fruit. It, kind of, it balances uh, it nicely. All right, so that definitely smells like I want to go ahead and roll into our next two S's, which are sip and swish. And again, for those of you joining us for the first time, the last S is spit or savor. And because it's Friday, I choose to savor. Um, normally when I'm professionally tasting wine, I always spit. I have my little spit bucket right here, but I'm, I'm savoring today. And man, that there's, that's a beautiful mouthful of wine, I gotta say. It's got beautiful red cherry fruit, pomegranate, spice, leather, cherry. 
In fact, chocolate covered cherry. Wow, that is really nice. And I mean, for $12 a bottle, if you like bold red wines with a blend of like fruit and earthiness and, and like I said, that leathery tobacco thing going on, this is, this is kind of a steal. And again, it's the Lee's Fitch Firehouse Red 2015 Vintage, $12 a bottle. And I get this question a lot. Um, it's always nice to serve your reds with a little bit of chill on them. It kind of brings the fruit out and tames the alcohol and tannins a little bit. So if you pop your reds in the fridge for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes before you enjoy them, I think you'll notice that it, it they taste better. So if you want to go ahead and have some fun with that, let me know what you think. But that's what we do. I, I love it. Like when you're in a restaurant and you order a red and it comes with a little chill on it, that's heaven. That's the, it means the wine is stored properly and that's the perfect usually drinking temperature too. So any questions about our first wine? Let's see who's here. Any questions? Awesome. Hi Deb, great to see you. And Tom, I hope you're hanging in there. Sorry you're having some technical technical difficulties. It could be on my end because I cut out a few times. I hope not. I haven't filmed from in here before, so we're just going to muscle through. So let me know if you continue to have issues and I'll try to make any adjustments that I can. <laughs> or I'll just drink more. We'll see. Anyway. All right. So... Since there aren't any questions, oh, and Deb says, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist the white. Good for you, lady. I love a gal who knows what she likes. So go ahead and just enjoy your white. Drink what you like is what I'm all about. This, this episode is for red wine folks and for folks interested in experiencing more of what red wine has to offer. How many of us stick with our one great variety over and over, right? I specifically did not include Cabernet Sauvignon in today's show because... That's generally a wine wine in a way. I love Cabernet Sauvignon, but sometimes it's nice to get out and explore different things. There's so many amazing wines out there that just don't get the love they deserve. So that's what I'm trying to highlight today. Okay, so our next wine, now we're moving from California, we're moving to Mendoza, Argentina, and we have the amazing Alta Vista Malbec. Let me go ahead and flip the screen for you. And you can see right there, beautiful label, Alta Vista Premium Malbec. It's a 2012. I've had this one for a little while. It ages very nicely. I was actually really pleased to open it today and, um, and taste it. It's just m more interesting than it was even when I got it. But um, Mendoza is um, pretty synonymous. Let me turn that off. Is synonymous with Malbec. And, you know, I just, I love the story of Malbec. Malbec started out and still is one of the Bordeaux blending grape varieties, right? You have Cabernet Sauvignon, Cab Franc, um, Merlot, Petit Verdot, and then you have Malbec. But over there, it was never the star. It was like the red-headed stepchild that, you know, maybe 1%, 2%, or very minimal percentages were used in the wines. In Bordeaux, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot are the stars. So somebody thought to bring the little Malbec grape to Argentina and its warmer climates, and guess what? It is now the signature grape of, of Argentina. It did so well. It just really found its, I like to say it's like when Justin Timberlake left NSYNC, you know? He kind of ascended to this fame that's like unbelievable just because he, I don't know, he just did remarkably well. And Malbec is a wonderful wine, especially if you like big, bold reds. And it, generally they can be found for, um, for great prices. Again, this is the Alta Vista Premium Malbec, $18 a bottle. I think you might even be able to find it for less than that. And it is owned by, by Count Patrick Dialon, and uh, their family's been making wine for under, over 250 years. They're a French family, so they've brought kind of the French idea of terroir with them to Argentina. And all terroir means, I know it's a little bit of a wine snobby term, but if you're interested in studying wine, you gotta know it. Terroir essentially means that a wine reflects where it comes from. That's really it. It's how grape variety, soil type, climate, and what the winemaker does to the wine come together to create a special wine that can only be from one place. So it's said to be a wine of place, you could say. So that's what they try to do. All their vineyards are high altitude vineyards, and you might say, well, Steph, what, what is high altitude? Who cares about a high altitude vineyard? But if you like red wine, well, any wine really, you should 
like a, a higher altitude wine because it allows the grape to get ripe but then at night it gets a lot cooler up there and the grape shuts down and it allows the grapes to retain their acid so these are the things that are essential to creating delicious wines. So that's all that means. So let's go ahead and dive into this wine. And again, this wine is 100% Malbec, aged for 12 months in both French and American oak barrels, and then uh, spends additional three months in the bottle prior to release. Um, and let's see, yeah, right away, I don't know if you guys can tell, let's, let's jump into our S's. But you can tell this wine is darker and denser than our previous wine. And that's what Malbec is known for. It has that beautiful, deep, dark color. It usually has quite um, significant tannins. So if you're a tannin lover, you should definitely be checking out Malbec. It's usually got lots of dark fruit. That's very typical of Malbec. And it usually has a lovely kind of spice cake note that's, that's just fabulous as well. So again, this wine looks, it's a 2012. Let's see, it, it looks, again, dense and purple and lovely, maybe a little reddish around the rim, but no browning. It looks looks divine. So let's go ahead and we're swirl and sniff. Yeah, man, now that this wine is a couple years on it, you can see like the legs going down the sides of the glass. I don't know if you can see that, but um, that is indicative of a fuller bodied high alcohol wine. Um, generally when you see that and when they have color, the streaks coming down the glass have some color to them, that just means the wine is even that dense. So again, on the nose, I was getting beautiful dark black fruit, like blackberry, plum, and black licorice, which I love. I know some people aren't the biggest fan of it, but I love it and I think that's why I like this, part of why I like this wine so much. So now it's time, let's go ahead and we'll swirl and, sw or sip and swish. And I always tell people, in fact, I added swish to my tasting protocol a few months back because you really have to swish the wine around your mouth to get a sense of what the wine is about. Because wine has a very, wine has texture. And unless it's coating your mouth, you're really not going to get a great idea about what the wine really does. Like by swishing it around my mouth, I can feel those tannins, which give that kind of astringent feel. The tannins are definitely there, but they're a little mellow because the wine is a few years old. Also it has a nice food friendly acidity. My um, tongue lit up a little bit. I'm immediately craving some grilled beef, grilled steaks, or skirt steak with a chimichurri or something amazing like that. I did make uh, serve this wine with a uh, skirt steak and chimichurri sauce once. It was phenomenal. Very, very delicious. Um, and again, you've got licorice, cassis, coffee, spice, and those lovely, those lovely tannins. Again, if you're a bold red wine lover, put Malbec on your list. And this one, this one's pretty widely available. So. If you can find this one, I highly recommend it. I think it's a steal at $18. You might find it for less than that. But um, anyway, so any questions about our little Malbec from Argentina? Let me see. Oh yeah, Deb, so this is so great, the legs. <laughs> and Deb asked, I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued what made you get into this. I'm deeply interested. And the short answer to that is, you know what, I finally found out what my true passion was. I had tried many different careers before, mostly in sales, pharmaceutical sales, and speech pathology, and those types of things. And then I, during a kind of a career transition, I discovered wine, and I just went for it. I went to work for a distributor, started pursuing credentials, and I've never looked back, and it's almost been about 10 years now. So, man, once once I found that, it just all, be, all became clear, so. Um, but that's the short story. Actually, the first episode of my podcast, I go really into detail about my journey and how I found my way into wine. So if you have, you're having trouble sleeping, <laughs> go ahead and put that episode on. But no, and, and I, everyone has their own journeys, and I, I, like to, I like to hear about everyone else's as well. And Monica said, or Jennifer says, follow your passion. Yeah, right, lady, right? That's what it's all about. And honestly, I tried everything else, so it was all that was left. <laughs> oh, hey, Monica, good to see you. I don't care if you come in late. You can come in anytime. Oh, missed the name of the Melbeck. It's the Alta Vista 
premium Malbec, and I think this might be backwards, but I will put it in the show notes, but the Alta Vista premium Malbec from Mendoza, Argentina, $18 a bottle. So I think it's a, it's quite the steal. Anyway, Monica, I think you actually had it when you were over here for, for an event or actually Chrissy's birthday. Anyway. All right. So any other questions about this one? Peggy says, can I be your assistant? Come on over, lady. <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> I'm a little overwhelmed these days, but it, it's all good. Good things are happening. I'm very happy. Okay, so those were our two steals, right? I got two steals that are more along the everyday wine um, picks, and now I've got our splurges. I, I like splurges. What can I say? But that's what makes them special, right? I mean, it's important for everybody. Don't feel like you have to have to drink $50 bottles of wine every day. You don't. You have to have any good wine level. It's like it's like fashion. Like you have to have your day for jeans or, you know, you got to have your full wine wardrobe, I guess. So you got to have your everyday wines, your special occasion wines, and all of that. And then Deb says, Stephanie, can I open my Pinot now? Which Pinot? Which Pinot are we talking about? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but um, let me know which one it is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on again. So our first splurge, I get sidetracked. Our first splurge comes to us from France's Rhone Valley. And okay, can you see the light reflecting off that beautiful embossed bottle? Chateauneuf de Pop. It's the beautiful Xavier Chateauneuf de Pop from France's Rhone Valley. 2010 vintage, it's $40 a bottle. So I think it probably looks like a more expensive wine, but it's not. It's around 40, 40 to $50 a bottle. Connection issues, but I'm just gonna proceed. This is one of the most under enjoyed wines, I think, in the United States. Um, if you like bold red wines, you need to know about Chateauneuf de Pop. It's just beautiful. And if the everyday version of Chateauneuf de Pop essentially is Cote de Rhone. So, but, if you're looking for a special occasion wine, you like big, bold reds, this is the wine for you. It comes to, for, to us from a man named Xavier Vignon. He is a very sought after enologist in uh, France's Rhone, Rhone Valley. Um, and he's been kind of a, a winemaker and negotiant for many years. He's made wine in all kinds of regions around the world. We've got the Rhone Valley, of course, Bordeaux, Napa, Champagne, and Australia. It doesn't get more diverse than that. That's, I mean, that's diversity, friends. And then he pretty much decided to start making, he was consulting with other people, and then he started, uh, started to make his own wine in 2007. And the grapes that go into this wine come from 120 different parcels. And whenever you see Chateauneuf de Pop, it is always a blend. And generally, the three primary grapes in a Chateauneuf de Pop blend are Grenache, Syrah, and Morvedra. So whenever you see an Australian wine with G or any wine with GSM on the label, and it's usually a big bold red, this these are the grapes: Grenache, Syrah, and Morvedra. And this is where they got it from. These wines are just they're phenomenal. And again, this wine is primarily Grenache, 65% Grenache, and the the rest is a split between Morvedra and Syrah. And again, each Great, brings something a little something different to the party. Grenache is um, known for its red fruit and spicy notes like cinnamon. Tends to be a higher alcohol grape, and that's why they blend it with Morvedra. Has a beautiful black fruit and kind of gaminess to it, but that's so delicious. And Syrah has that beautiful structure and tannin, and um, and red fruit as well. So let's go ahead. Now all this talking has made me thirsty. Pour a little bit. All right. Yeah, and Monica says that bottle would make a beautiful gift. It absolutely would. It looks like a way more expensive bottle for sure. I mean, forty dollars. I mean, they're they're they tend to be so they're pricey, but maybe not as pricey as say a Napa Cab. So there, it would definitely make a nice holiday gift for sure. All right. So we're looking at the color of this wine, right? Let's see. Da, da, da. All right, you can, sorry, I got a little off kilter. You can see it's a, a garnety, deep garnety red, but you might be able to tell in this one, folks. This wine has a little bit of browning around the edges. It is a 2010, right? So it has a little bit of bottle age going on there. So that's a normal process that happens with as red wines age. 
They can brown around the edges. They also get lighter in color. I wouldn't say this wine is necessarily lighter in color, but it has the littlest hint of brown around the edges, but nothing floating in it. We can see the, the tears, the streaks coming down the side of the glass, and we know it, it's a big wine, 14.5% alcohol, um, as we might expect. So big, bold red, generally of higher alcohol. And let's go ahead and roll into swirl and sniff. I think I got some on it. God, this wine, it's got beautiful. The first thing you smell is like, if you've ever, has anyone out there ever cooked with Herbes de Provence? You've got like thyme and like the most beautiful, savory, herbal kind of aroma going on. It's all, there's also some red fruit and spice, but it's that beautiful herbal notes that, that hit you and, oh, you're just like, I can't wait to take a sip of this wine. So, and again, that's typical of native. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do sip and swish. Happy place. Yeah, so the tannins, again, this is a little older. The tannins are very silky. Sure, plum, spice, and definitely some lavender. That is a lovely, a lovely wine. I immediately wanna pair this. Like this would be a great, um, this would be a great Coco Van wine or a Beef Bourguignon for those of you who do that, who, who like to make that as I do. I make it with short ribs, so it needs a bigger red. This, this wine would be perfection with it. Only be able to stand up for it for sure. And again, in France, as we know, Chateauneuf du Pop is the name of the region where the wine is from. Over there, France, they, they name, with the ex very few exceptions, the wines are all named according to where they are from, okay? So, oh, and Debs, I'm just checking. Any questions about this wine? This beautiful, beautiful wine. Deb says, oh, Paul Hobbs. Paul Hobbs Pinot Noir. Is it the Cross Barn Pinot Noir or regular Paul Hobbs? That's, that's a nice one. I, Paul Hobbs is a wonderful winemaker. But um, yeah, if there's any questions about this wine or any of the wines that we've had so far. And if to those of you who may, might be watching this video after the live broadcast, please go ahead and make comments and ask questions as, as if you were watching it live. I like to remind you as we go, because I do monitor these for weeks afterwards, and I promise to get back to you and answer your questions and respond to your comments. Um, I promise. So anyway. Is anyone out there listening? Can you, are you getting, and just because I'm shooting from a different place, I normally wouldn't ask, but is any, anyone out there noticing some connection difficulties who's seen the show before? Normally I know we do really well with that, but if you could let me know, I would really appreciate it. Cause again, I don't, I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing. So, all right, one more sip. Oh, that's like, oh, you know what? I didn't have to pour that out. Oh, well, okay. So now, and I've actually pre-poured this one. I didn't want to open the whole bottle. This is a this is a special bottle, a very special bottle that um, to us. It's the Lucia. It's giving me a reconnect signal. All right, so it is the Lucia Syrah, the Soberanes Vineyard Syrah from the Santa Lucia Highlands. It's a 2012 vintage. It's $60 a bottle. It is pricey, but it is definitely worth it for sure. Um, flip back. There we go. Um, Syrah is definitely a grape. You should be um, exploring more this winter. I don't know why it has never caught on here in the U.S. Cabernet Sauvignon. So if you enjoy Cabernet Sauvignon, wine comes to us from the Pizzoni family in the Santa Lucia Highlands region of California, which is right outside of Monterey. Um, the Lucia label is the sister label of the Pizzoni Estate wine, the Pinot Noir. Um, and again, while that the Pizzoni Estate is committed to Pinot Noir, the Lucia label is um, features the fruit from the other vineyards that the family farms, such as the well-known and legendary Pizzoni Vineyard, um, Gary's Vineyard, which is legendary, and then the Soberanes Vineyard, which is... Um, where this wine comes from, it's their newest vineyard. It was planted in 2008 um, uh, to Chardonnay, Pinot, and Syrah. The Syrah was sourced from a man by the name of John Albin, who is uh, pretty much a guru of Syrah. So it couldn't come from a bar. Um, 
Oh, thanks for letting me know, Jen. I know it does seem to be glitching quite a bit. Um, anyway, but I'm just going to finish up this last one and I'll cover it all in the show notes if you happen to lose connection. So sorry about that, folks. We thought I'd try something different this time, but, um, but anyway, uh, but Gary Pizzoni, amazing winemaking family. He grew up in a, uh, a farming family and they were farming vegetables and then he got inspired to plant grapes and his dad was very resistant, didn't want to do it. And then he's like, dad, have you ever been to a $300 lettuce tasting? So he wanted to glam it up a bit. He just has the biggest personality that you've ever encountered, especially in the wine world. Um, he searched for many years to find the right water supply to, uh, to be able to even grow vineyards where the family grows their vineyards now. And, um, and I've never, I've never almost died on a winery visit before, but he, he took us on a Jeep ride that was just one we will never forget that was so amazingly special. And the beauty of it is his sons, uh, Mark and Jeff now are involved in the Pizzoni wine, making Pizzoni wines. And they, you know, they've got a, a few different labels, but they're just an amazing family making really amazing wine. So next time you land in San Francisco, rather than always heading north, I would encourage you to head south and visit uh, Carmel and Santa Lucia Highlands and um, you re you got to drive out. But again, nothing floating in it, no browning. It looks uh, beautifully translucent red and just gorgeous. So now I'm going to roll into Swirl and Sniff. Oh, and again, right off the bat, beautiful, beautiful red fruit. You get pepper, a little gaminess going on in there, but in, in a very good way. Again, you get that, that peppery thing that's very, that's hallmark Syrah. It's very characteristic of Syrah and it's just, even on the nose, it's already beautiful. All right, so let's go ahead and sip and swish. Yeah, and right off the bat, Again, you swish it around your mouth, you get the beautiful tannin structure that Syrah is known for. It just kind of lights up, it lights up your palate and the beautiful kind of, yeah, the beautiful red and black fruit. Again, the savory herbal flavors and then again, that pepperiness, that's so nice. It's just, it's a beautiful wine. And again, if you haven't, have never um, experimented with Syrah, I highly encourage you to go out and seek some out and at least if even if you don't like it at least you ha will have tried it but I highly encourage you to do that because this is a beautiful wine I think all of our wines I introduced you to today are good wines and um, and does anybody have any questions about any of our wines we've tasted today and I apologize again for the glitches in the connection if anyone can hear me throw me up an emoji or something Let's see. Yeah, I'm just seeing people saying it is glitching. I'm sorry. But again, I will uh, provide all the wine details in the show notes, I promise. And your homework for this weekend and the next week until we meet again will be go out and try a red wine from any one of these grape varieties I've, I've mentioned. Thank you for that. And um, uh, yeah, that's your homework. And if you find something you like, I want you to come back and in this video thread, I want you to post a picture about you. Don't even